Halloween 2, 2009 by Rob Zombie, the director's cut. So, after the first one, two years prior, went into the story of how Michael Myers grew from a chubby little girl to a fucking wrestler, this one has him return. Big surprise. And it also goes into how Laurie is dealing with what happened two years ago. We start out with Annie being rushed to the hospital. She's crying and screaming. I think it's because she just realized that she's contractually obligated to do this sequel. And I won't expand too much on the opening, but I will say the first 20 minutes or so are among the best of this movie. As I already said, this goes into how Laurie is holding up. Not well, in case you were wondering. It actually goes into the psychology and shows a pretty credible picture of someone who's had something traumatic and tragic happen to her very recently and I mean she's basically falling apart and I was surprised to realize that it made for pretty good drama when we were with Lori and the scenes weren't complete shit and I mean I'm really glad that this wasn't a slasher film. Oh, wait. See, that's the real problem here. For a slasher film, I mean, the whole Michael Myers aspect of this film is as straightforward and just... I mean, if you want to see a lot of killing, sure, this one will do that. If you like Rob Zombie's style, sure, this one has that. And I will say, the gore and the death scenes are much better than those of the first. There is also more death. But, the best thing about this really is Laurie trying to deal with it. Honestly, oh, and I've heard this is a bit different in the theatrical cut. I've only watched the director's cut, so. But if someone has cut just the good scenes of Laurie trying to deal with it, and, you know, not getting along with Annie, cut those scenes together, that would actually make decent enough little short film about someone being destroyed by a tragedy. It wouldn't have an ending, obviously, but it would be a hell of a lot fucking better than this as a whole. The acting is reasonable. I've said it before, Daniel Harris can act, and she actually gets to show it here. Scout Taylor Compton, she's okay. On the whole, there is not a lot of really shitty acting in this, although even Brad DeRiff gets some shitty acting done. The characters are at least halfway better than the first and the overall impression I have of Rob Zombie's movies, it seems like, and I don't know this for sure, but it seems like he likes to make all the characters completely obnoxious and unlikable, and here, a couple of them aren't. We have genuinely credible, likable characters. I still wouldn't say that I really cared when someone died, but at least, you know, again, when it worked as a drama, and sometimes when it didn't even work as a drama, the acting and the characters, pretty decent, not bad. I suppose I should also say Loomis, Malcolm McDowell, returns, and he's turned into a bit of an asswipe. He's basically making money off the tragedy that was the first film 
and the events in the first film. And, th th yeah, he's, he's just being an asshole, being a pervert, and for some reason people put up with this. I, I don't know. If he was a pop star, if he was a celebrity, maybe he could get away with being a pervert and an asshole to everybody, but he's just an author. I mean, and a psychologist. Are they really that respected by the kind of people who buy gory real-life stories? I think the film actually sort of expects us to care about him, and we really don't. I mean, I didn't even particularly like him in the first one, but in this one he was just completely horrible. Every single time it cut to him, I wanted it to cut back to uh, Laurie. At least he did get a haircut. That's nice. Not everyone in this looks like a goddamn hippie. Rob also seems to have come to terms with the fact that this is, you know, taking place today. You know, the first one looked like, at least, well, we weren't entirely sure, you know. Another thing that he's come to terms with, well, partially anyway, is he actually does sort of make a choice on the whole nature-nurture thing. You know, because in the first movie, at first it seems like we're supposed to think that Michael was made evil by his environment, even though the first time he fucking smiles at all is in the mental institution, which this reminds us of, by the way, with a really obviously recast actor who looks about as much as a girl as the first one did. The effects are pretty good. Like I said, the death scenes were better. There are some reasonably creative kills, and that's what you expect from a slasher flick. You know, a good slasher flick, some good creative kills. The, the killings are pretty brutal. He goes about some stabbing. He uses an axe. There's a little bit of, you know, it, it comes across that this is, you know, a killing machine. You know, that didn't work completely in the first one, I would say. Some of the editing is good. Some of it is really bad and obvious. Like there's a time when it cuts back and forth between some characters eating meat and talking about, ah, we're all animals, and Michael killing someone. Yeah, we, we get it. We get what you're getting at. You don't have to constantly go back and forth for, I don't know, a minute straight, I think. It's shot nicely enough. A lot of handheld camera. If you like his style, this is at least what I think his usual style is. I'd say the major problem here is just piss poor script. At the end of the day, this movie adds nothing but more to the body count, you know? I mean, I'm not saying the first was really good. I really don't think it was. I think it was pretty shit, but this one just, other than the psychology, there is nothing here. You know, and, and the pretty good kills, death scenes. It just... It isn't as easy to take in or forgive as a lot of slashers that are just straightforward and admit that they're cheap. I've been dancing around it this entire review. Okay, I'm just gonna come out and say it. You probably already heard it. Michael Myers, in this fucking movie, is told to kill by his fucking mother on a fucking white horse. D does that not just right there kill it for you? It's not, not 
one of the stupidest ideas to hit slasher films in the 30 years that the subgenre has existed. I think so. This is not that enjoyable of a slasher flick. We don't care when anybody dies. It's not even that kind of thing of, oh, I hate that character, I hope they die. Nor is it, you know, oh, I hope that character doesn't die. You know, you're never, you know, sitting there going, no, no, don't turn that corner, he's right there. You know, you're just, oh, okay, that person died also, you know. There's very little impact. I will say the kills are more effective than the first. They almost couldn't not be, you know. It's just, if you just want a good, straightforward slasher, there are plenty out there that aren't asking you to accept that, you know, Michael Myers' mother being in this fucking movie isn't just a cheap excuse for him to cast his wife in the movie. The ending... I'm not sure if I should say it tops everything else or it bottoms everything. It just... It will leave you with a total what-the-fuck expression on your face. This ending... I mean, I only watched the director's cut, but I hear the theatrical version is actually really stupid also. So weird. So fucking... And the whole concept... I mean, I'm not gonna reveal it here, but near the end... It's just so stupid. Overall, if I haven't talked you out of this fucking movie yet, as far as I can tell, the director's cut is better than the theatrical version. Don't go watching the director's cut if you've already watched the theatrical version, though. If you think this movie is shit, I don't think a different cut is really going to make a difference. But you, if you are insistent on watching some version of this movie, the director's cut is probably seemingly better. If you'll excuse me... There, there has to be some way to surgically remove the last two hours from my memory. That was my spoiler-free review of Halloween 2. Goddamn you, Rob Zombie. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna need therapy.